Omigyan timidandasya gina jina salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri nirvena maha shri chaitanya no bistam stapti tam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padanti kam one day hum shiguro shiyuta padakamala shiguru vaishnavam scha Sri Rupam Stagujatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajiva Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Sacha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutalai Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinangane <coughs> Namaste Saraswati Deve, <coughs> Goravani Pracharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyat Yade Satarane, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Eti Namine, Sri Varshabana Devi Dayate, Kribhaktaye Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam, Dayane Prabhupada Maha, Madur Ojwala, Premadya, Sri Rupanuga, Bhaktida, <coughs> Sri Gauda Karunasha, the Vigrahaya in the most today. Namaste, Gauravani, Sri Murtaye Dinatarine, Rupanuga, Virudapa, Siddhanta Dwanta, Harine. Namo Goraki Shoraya, Saksad Vairagya, Murtaye, <coughs> Vipalamba, <coughs> Asambo Day. <clears throat> Jagannathaya Te Namaha <clears throat> Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchirananda Mamine Gola Shakti Sarupaya Rupanuga Varayate Gola Vibhava Bhumestvam Nir Jasesa Sajanatriya Vaishnavaya Nam Sarvaboma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Panchakopa, Thiru Vischa, Kripa Sindhu, Hei Vichya, Titanam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaha Namaha, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur, Bhakta Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So today we'll... Uh, speak about the occasion which is the disappearance day of Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj coming in the line of, of disciplic succession and he pro, he proceeds Bhakti Vinod Thakur and we'll also speak of uh, Rasikananda who was a disciple of Shamananda just after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. And he, both of these personalities today is their disappearance today, or Tirubhav. Uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was an extraordinary person. As he says, he's a Babaji. And Babaji's take initiation from other Babaji's. And so he took initiation from another Babaji. I um, can't remember his particular name, that other Babaji, but Jagannath Babaji Maharaj has been credited with the discovery of Lord Chaitanya's birthplace. On Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the two of them actually met in the year 1880 and became good friends. And Jagannath Babaji Maharaj, senior in age, was very much respectable too and honored the Bhakti Vinod Thakur for his great knowledge and for his great writings. Um, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was an invalid, at least it appeared to be, and generally he was carried in a basket by his assistant Bihari. Uh, one day he was walking in a particular area 
and they came across some place. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he became ecstatic, jumped out of his basket, leaped four or five feet into the air and start chanting Jai Sachinandana, Jai Sachinandana, Gaur Hari. And he was dancing in ecstasy. Later, it was found that he had discovered the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, which is now the actual birthplace that is designated as the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya's birthplace in due course of time after his disappearance became obscure and there was different uh, opinions where it was. Some said it was on the eastern side of the Ganga. Others saying it was on the western side of the Ganga. Others didn't really know for sure. Mm -hmm. But in that area, there were many Tulsi plants were growing in that same area. And so that was one indication that this was the area where um, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had appeared. So Jagannath Das Babaji was credited with that. Jagannath Das Babaji, although he was old, in fact, his body was so old that um, his eyelids were so heavy that they would cover his eyes. And sometimes he, he would have to lift his eyelids up just to be able to see. <laughs> but although he was so elderly, many times when he would meet someone or for some reason feel ecstatic, he would dance in ecstasy in his dancing was like a young man and he was over a hundred years old when he would be dancing when he uh, he actually left the the world at the age of 147 years he lived i think it was 147 years he lived to but he was uh, one of the proponents in bringing about the worship of Mahaprabhu. Uh, there's one personality who created a beautiful prayer in honor him, of him. And this prayer is um, known as the Sri Srila Jagannath Dastikam. Um, I'll recite some of the verses and the translations to give us a little indication of Jagannath Das Babaji. He was a proponent of the holy name. Um, he taught the chanting of the holy name by his example and his ecstasy. He loved kirtan, and he would always dance in ecstasy in kirtan. It didn't matter what the music was or how the kirtan was expressed. Whenever there was kirtan and he was around, he was dancing. So here's one verse Rupa Nugan Param Sudatam Shri Gorachandra Priya Bhakti Rajam Sri Radhika Madhava Chitra Raman Vande Jagannatha Vidum Varayam. Translation I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, the foremost of the followers of Srila Rupa Goswami, the king of Goranga's dear devotees. He takes pleasure in remembering Radhika and Madhava. That's the first verse. Sri Surya Kanda Sadinam Kripalor Vidvam Vara Sri Madhusu Dalasya Prestas Rupena Virajamanam Vande Jagannatha Vidum Vareyam. I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, who was the dearest associate of Sri Madhusudan Das Babaji. So here's the person he took Babaji from. His name is Sri Madhusudan. He is the most merciful resident of Surya Kund. Sri Dhamma Vrindavan Vasa Bhakta Nagsatra. Rajasthita Soma to Yam, 
Ekante nam sritam sagam palam vande jagata vibhungariyam. I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, who stood out from the rest of the devotees of Dham Vrindavan, just like the moon among the stars. He was the protector of the assembly of Vaishnavas, who are uniquely dedicated to the chanting of the holy name. Vairagya Vidya Hari Bhakti Diptam Dajana Kritaya Viveda Varjam Sraddha Sutash Adara Vitti Mantam Vande Jagata Vibhu Vareyam. I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnava, effulgent with devotion to Hari, endowed with knowledge and veneration and, and, and renunciation, a thunderbolt to those who are wicked and pretenders and ever affectionate to the faithful. Yeah. Sam priti gora sama sudanyas chakre hitaj jana griham pakat sam devar nutam vaishnava sarva bomam vande jagata vibhuvalayam. I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas was directed by Gauranga himself to point out the place where he had appeared on this earth. He is worshipped by even the gods as the sovereign of the Vaishnavas on this earth. Okay. Sancharya samvam nija shakti rasin yobhakta punam cha vinoda deve tene jagatam harinama vanyam vande jaganatha vibhuma vareyam I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, who infused the devoted Bhakti Vinod with all his own potency, and through him unleashed the flood of Harinam throughout the universe. So this is this is the time when Harinam started to blossom, when Lord Chaitanya's birthplace was discovered, the Vaishnavas came together, and Kirtan started to resound in all directions, all due to the mercy of Jagannathas Babaji. Sri Nama Dhamma Prabhuvala Prachare Ita Param Prema Rasabhi Magnam Sri Yoga Pite Krita Nit Nitra Bhagam One Day Jagannatha Vidun Vareyam I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, always immersed in an ocean of sacred rapture and engage in forcefully preaching the holy names in the Lord's abode. He danced ecstatically in the yoga pit at Mayapur. Hmm. I have to remember, he was over a hundred years old when he was dancing ecstatically. Mayapura Dhamani Sakta Chitam Goda Paksena Chamoda Yuktam Sri Nama Ganardara Asranitram Vande Jagannatha Vibhuvarayam. I venerate Jagannath, the best of the Vaishnavas, who is totally attached to the holy Dham of Mayapur, who is the joyful, who is joyful from the vision of Garanga whose eyes flow with tears from the chanting of the holy names. Hey Deve, hey Vaishnav, Sarva Bhoma, Bhaktiya Prabhuta, Mahendra Dishnam, Vagastra, Vistara, Kritim, Supunyam, Vande Mohur Bhakti Vinoda Dharam. O Lord, O Sovereign of the Vaishnavas, through your devotion you have overcome even the heavens. I constantly venerate the most pious line of Bhakti Vinod Thakur that has grown out of your body and works. Hmm. So yeah, it was him who enunciated the line from Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which is our line, all the way down to Srila Prabhupada. Jagannath Das Babaji, who has identified the Sukla Pancham, the month of Mag, as the as the Sri Panchami, as the birthplace of Vishnu Priya Das, the wife of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
told, he told his, this to Bhakti Vinod, and from him the custom was established throughout the world and so that everyone honors Vishnu Priya Devi on this day. So Vishnu Priya is honored on this particular day that was enunciated by Jagannath Das Bhavali. It's called the Sukla Panchami of the month of Magh. Hmm. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Goswami chose Vishnu Priya's appearance day to reinstate the famous Vishva Vaishnava Raja Sabha, the World Association of Vaishnavas. And so that was done on that particular day. So these are some little And he met uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, as we mentioned, in, in a village called Amla Jora in the year 1880. Okay. He was born in a respectable family in Bangladesh around the year 1780. And he was, he's called in He's called uh, the general of the Vaishnavas, Gora Vibhava Bhumesh Tvam Nirdhisesha Sajanapriya Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha. He was the leader of all the Vaishnavas at that time. Although he was a Bhajananandi, Still, Bhajananandi is one who does his own bhajan and doesn't preach, but still, he interacted with many and he did perform preaching through the holy name of the Lord and through uh, inspiring Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur to preach in different ways. And uh, he also engaged others in doing various types of service in and around Lord Chaitanya's birthplace. And then Bhakti Vinod Thakur was the person who then uh, re really excavated the birthplace and established a monument there, which is now the temple of Lord Chaitanya or the birthplace. It's called Janmastan. You can go, once you go, and you walk into the gate just to the right, there's a bhajan kutir of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. You go a little farther up and to the left, there's the entrance of the temple. And then there's three altars there. One altar with Lord Chaitanya's consorts, Vishnu Priya and Lakshmi Priya on the altar. And then uh, there is the Panchatattva there. And there's also with Lord Chaitanya with his parents. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, let's see, I can't, I can't remember clearly exactly all three altars. But. And then if you go around the side, you find the actual birthplace and devotees, they go and there's like a tree there. It's called the Neem tree. And this is where Lord Shaitanya was actually born under that particular tree. And devotees collect dirt from that tree as uh, worshipable the place where Lord Chaitanya appeared. And there's a little bhajan kutir there. And inside there are deities of uh, Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Manta holding a baby. And that baby is indicated as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if you go around the back, you'll find there's deity of Gaur Godadhar, stole by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, along with um, um, a deity of Varaha Nishringa, one of the forms of Nishringa Dev is Varaha Dev also, um, along with uh, his consort Lakshmi, like that. And there are other areas there. It's a wonderful place to go and just chant Japa. Um, when we go there for pilgrimage, we bring many devotees and we do kirtan. And there's a huge kirtan hall which can hold literally two or three thousand devotees there. 
And it's a beautiful compound that's uh, all uh, founded by Jagannath Das Babaji and, and developed by Bhakti Vinod Thakur to some extent and then Bhakti Siddhanta continue the development and to make it in what it was, what it is today. So um, we had the good fortune to go to his birthplace and see his, uh, there is a shrine there. And then also in the back, there is a place where he used to chant Japa. And he would chant Japa for hours on end without stopping. He, he is one of the proponents of chanting the holy names of the Lord continuously. So this is a little bit about Jagannath Babaji. Today is also the disappearance day of uh, Rasikananda. Rasikananda mentions here, let's see. Sometimes he's called Srila Rasika Deva Goswami. And he was born in the year 1512 in Midpur. His father was a Chutananda, his mother was Bhavani. It says that he is, um, he was an actually eternal associate of the Lord in the spiritual world, and he is one of the Manjaris in Krishna Lila. And his spiritual master was Shamananda. Although Shamananda took initiation from Ridai Chaitanya Goswami, who was in the mood of Sakyaras, because Ridai Chaitanya Goswami was um, the disciple of uh, Gauri Das Pandit, who was Subha in Krishna's Leela. But uh, when once um, Shamananda went to Vrindavan, he met Jiva Goswami, who engaged him in worship of Vrindavan. And by that worship, um, Shamananda actually came in contact with Lalita and Radharani personally, and Radharani blessed him. So that was that his disciple was Rasikananda. He's also known as Rasikananda Marari. And he was given the service by his disciple, uh, by his uh, spiritual master, Shamananda, to preach in the area of Utkala, which is a part of Orissa. And it is explained that he made the entire area Vaishnavas. He transformed everyone into devotees of Lord Chaitanya. We can give a little, uh, little bit of history of Rasikananda. When he was looking for his spiritual master one day while in Granta, Sheila, he went to a solitary place to meditate. He had just entered into a very deep trance when he heard a voice from an unseen, unseen source saying, his name was Rasika Morari, that's his whole name. And the voice said, Morari, you need not be anxious any longer. Your guru is Shamananda and you will meet him here shortly. Take shelter of him and your life will be successful. So he heard this divine voice upon his meditation. So one thing we should know in Krishna consciousness, and this is very important, if we seriously pray, seriously from the core of our heart with all, with all attention, we can achieve these qualities and these activities in devotional service that we aspire for. In other words, if we want to chant offenselessly, if we pray seriously and beg the Lord for his mercy, he will give us the guidance that will lead us to offenseless chanting. 
if we pray seriously to become uh, knowledgeable in the uh, philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam and make an effort by studying, we will become expert in the knowledge of Bhagavatam. Sincere prayer with concentration coming for with done with uh, attention and concentration, of course, brings about success. Because Krishna is in the heart and when one seriously wants something that is in line with their devotional progress, devotional qualities, the Lord will assist that devotee and many times even give it directly to that devotee. Rasikananda was a very powerful personality. In fact, he was making so many people Krishna conscious. He was the best of his, best of the disciples of his teacher. It says here, a spiritual master may have innumerable followers who call themselves who can call their, who call him their guru, but are disciples in name only. It says here, a spiritual master may have innumerable followers who call him their guru, but are disciples in name only. Only a true disciple who has dedicated himself completely to the spiritual master is imbued with all the powers coming from the spiritual master. Shamananda invested Rasika with such spiritual powers that he was able to convert many criminals, atheists, Muslims, and other fallen spirit souls to the path of devotion, bestowing the jewel of prema upon all men. And here's a beautiful story here. On one occasion, a wicked Muslim tried to silence Rasikananda by having him attacked by an intoxicated elephant. You see, sometimes male elephants, they go into what is called musk. And they exude this, uh, this liquid coming from their forehead, and then they go mad. And when they go mad, they just go on a stampede and destroy everything in, it, in their path. So one such elephant was there and he was coming through the villages. And uh, this um, elephant was running and smashing everything. And then Rasikananda was there and he didn't move. He stayed right in the path of the elephant and the elephant was running right towards him. When he got close, Rasikananda just put up his hands, offering respects to the elephant. The elephant stopped. The elephant looked at Rasikananda and then he bowed his head to Rasikananda and Rasikananda started to chastise the elephant for doing all the damage that he was doing, causing so many people distress and harm. And that elephant just listened. And then later on, it was mentioned that that elephant was given a name, initiation by Rasikananda, and he was given the name Gopal, <laughs> Gopal the elephant. And uh, this elephant changed completely. It became very peaceful and very obedient and stopped doing all his damaging. So that was the power of this Rasikananda, he was very, very powerful. But Shamananda had a particular deity, which was his favorite deity, called the Govinda deity, and he gave the worship to Rasikananda. Rasikananda would do Harinam all the time, and he would be overcome with complete ecstasy. He's credited with writing Shamananda Sataka, Bhakta, Bhagavatam, Tastaka, 
in Kunja Kali Dwadasaka. So these are some of the, and today is his disappearance day. So there's a, there's a book that's published within the ISKCON society on the life of Rasikananda. And it's a very interesting, full of adventure type of book of the exploits and preaching of Rasikananda. There's a place Hmm, I'm thinking, where is it? It is in, oh, it's not too far from Jagannath Puri, maybe five hours by car. It is the temple of Sheer Kora Gopinath. Now, I'm trying to think of the name of that area. I can't, but there is a Samadhi Mandir. I think it's his uh, disappearance mandir. It was placed there in the courtyard of the, uh, yeah, it's in Raymuna. That's right. Thank you. In Raymuna of the Samadhi Mandir of uh, Jagannath um, Rasikananda. So you can go there. We, we were there. We did kirtan there. And uh, it's a big place. We had a few hundred devotees where we did kirtan. <laughs> okay, so um, I am uh, going to conclude here and see if there's any one would like to. You can ask questions related to the talk or if you feel you can also ask questions on other subjects. Or make a comment. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for a very nice class. Got to know many things about both of them. Thank you so much. Our dear devotees, please go ahead with questions or comments. Thank you. Gurudev, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, my obeisances. My, accept my humble obeisances, Gurudev. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Um, uh, Guru Maharaj, when we went to Mayapur, we heard the story from uh, this devotee Prabhu um, about uh, how, uh, about the, the story you told about Jagannath Das Babaji. He jumped out of his uh, uh, the basket and he was so happy to uh, he was actually called by Bhakti Vinod Thakur and requested him to um, confirm that this was the place of uh, birth of uh, uh, Mahaprabhu. Um, and, yeah, and he told how Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how he, um, he um, actually found out uh, how, uh, because this place was lost. And he, how he had to find out from different scriptures and everything. Uh, so that was a very nice. And I, we were right there where he told this was all the um, a Tulsi uh, farm, like a forest. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So it was very nice to be there and hear this story. I felt very fortunate. Yeah, it was the area where the Muslims were living. And it was, yeah. but it was a big mound of Tulsis. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur just had a vision that this was the place when he needed confirmation. So it just happened that Bhagavad Jagannath Das Babaji showed that confirmation by dancing in ecstasy. When he came there, there was no indication other than his dancing in ecstasy. And that was, and then he started say, chanting Jai Sachi Nandana. So that was, uh, yeah, it was Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually studied maps and trying to find it because there were different opinions of where the birthplace was 
no one knew for sure. Yeah. 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 Thank you for adding the details to that. That's that's uh, an important pastime. Yeah. Because of that, today we have a beautiful mundir there now. Huge. It's not a mundir. It's a it's a huge compound. Yeah. It's a huge compound. So, Gurudev, I uh, I uh, have a question that uh, Jagannath Babaji is not a Diksha Guru of uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Um, so, um, why he uh, like uh, uh, he is there on the you know the pictures we have? He he is there. Uh, I'm sure he he has received the most important instructions from him, but. Um, uh, why not Diksha Guru? Why why his Shiksha Guru is there on the pictures? Our line is like that. It's Diksha Shiksha. It's both. You'll find also uh, Gorky Shore does Babaji Maharaj was not a disciple of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So that that area right there, that's that's a line right there of Shiksha. It wasn't to uh, to Bhakti Bhakti Siddhanta took initiation from Gordika Das Babaji, that the Diksha is mentioned there, but our line is a mixed series of Diksha and Shiksha. It's more of a Shiksha line. You can trace that back even with other gurus and disciples that are given that disciplic line. Uh, that, is our, that is our heritage, our culture. So Shiksha me Shiksha and Diksha, according to Shastra, which is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, is equally powerful and equally respectable. Um, there you find even too many, there are many persons who take Diksha from some person, but find all their knowledge and all their uh, inspiration and spiritual practice comes coming from their from another person, which is their Shiksha guru. So that's our line, yeah. It's, it's a combination of both Diksha and Shiksha. And sometimes we say Shiksha line because Shiksha really means instructions. And that person who is prominent in establishing Lord Chaitanya's teachings actually becomes the outstanding personality that's placed within that line. So some are followers, some are Diksha disciples and some are Shiksha disciples. Hmm. Yeah, we even have that in our own society. There are devotees who have taken initiation from a particular guru, but they they align themselves more with another spiritual master. And that becomes their main spiritual master, but he is known as their shikshu. Well, that's fine. Yeah. There's no difference between Shiksha and Guru. And that's and that's it. The actual statement it says Shiksha and Diksha are two manifestations of the of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Two equal manifestations of the Supreme Personality. Hmm. <clears throat> in, terms, in terms of Guru Tattva, that is. <laughs> yeah. So Gurudev, I um, this word. Shiksha Guru and Mentor, um, uh, it, it, it is different, right? Like we don't, we, we don't necessarily look to uh, Shiksha Guru as a, like a whom we give our reports or tell our spiritual progress, but we just hear them and we feel so inspired. Yeah, the word mentor is just something we apply to our, our practice here. It's just a word that designates, but um, you know you can also align that uh, when uh, one of our leading spiritual master was teaching the whole process of mentorship. Uh, some people were saying, "Well, it's like a shiksha guru system, isn't it?" And he agreed, "Yes, it's like a shiksha guru system, but it's less formal." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in the shiksha system, you don't change shikshas, but mentors you can change. But it's that, that mentor is playing the role as a shiksha guru. 
Mm. It's something we adopted in order to facilitate um, the care of devotees when they are away from. The best principle would be, and this is was introduced by one of our leading, is, is to have a shiksha initiation program where people take shiksha and get initiated from that person, and that's their shiksha guru, and that's their shiksha disciple. But it's never been instituted, and it seems to be not so much accepted within our society, but that was introduced because it, it develops this type of allegiance to this personality. Just like we have allegiance to the guru, diksha guru, one should have allegiance to shiksha guru. But mentorship is more, is less, less binding. It's more or less, uh, you know, a, a go between between the two where there is a connection that allows that person to execute devotional service under the guidance of someone who is more qualified. More like a, it's more like a big brother, big sister system. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for clarifying that, Gurudev. Yeah, my, um, our, uh, um, I, I would, I would say he's Shiksha Guru. My, we, we write, write them as mentors, but they are more like a Shiksha Guru, Antaryami Prabhu in Boston. Yeah. Uh, and they, uh, when we call them, they, they don't necessarily ask what is your sadhana or what is, the, they, he, he just picks up something from Bhagavatam he has read and he speaks so nicely on for like 20, 30 minutes that it's so inspiring. We got that love from Bhagavatam from him. So I, he's, he's more like a shiksha guru than a, like a mentor, I would say. Like, I think so. Yeah. And that's his forte. He's a, he's a Bhagavatam uh, devotee. He, he absorbs himself in Bhagavatam. So he's giving the best he can, which is Srimad Bhagavatam, which is Krishna in the form of philosophical knowledge. Yeah, that's a nice way to develop mentorship is that you just simply, your mentor, when you make the contact. And then if if the disciple or the mentee, we can use that, we created these words, mentee wants to speak about something of their own practice, that's that's fine. It's more or less, less, less formal. And it's not like, well, what did you do to let you see your sudden report and all this stuff? Because our society is so loose, devotees don't have a sense of responsibility to the seniors. We've developed all these extra programs. <laughs> and when we find it, it's natural that, it, that all these extra programs are needed. Yeah. That's, our society is like that. We just keep adding all kinds of programs because we're not following Prabhupada's programs. <laughs> And because we're not following the original program, we try to come up with an alternate program to substitute for that. And that, that becomes common affair, both in management and in the and spiritual, uh, you know, and spiritual communication. In other words, philosophical communication. This is the age of invention. We're always inventing something new. <laughs> <laughs> chastise us for that and you know always you got to do something new just do something new whatever you do do something new it makes you look good in the painting thank you gurudev thank you so much yeah thank you well we need these systems because we're not following the original teachings. We can't follow the original teachings, so we need something to substitute for that. And what you're doing is actually what we need. It's just contact with a senior devotee and hearing about Krishna. That's all. Well, hearing, discussing, like that. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the best way for mentorship. <laughs> And the persons who's who's in that role, they can just see how how eager the persons are that they're speaking to, and that would be a way to you know to understand how much they're progressing or not progressing. We need somebody to tell us, you got to check your rounds. <laughs> we need somebody to tell us, you got to read the books. We need somebody to tell us, you know, you got to visit the deity. All the stuff that we anyone. should be doing without being, yeah. without being told, we have to institute it into a, to a type of program. So we, we wind up doing it through the program. <laughs> Otherwise, the Krishna consciousness is easy. It's really easy. It doesn't require all this 150 type of management programs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, are you uh, understanding what I'm trying to communicate? Yes, yes, Gurudev, yeah. It's, it's simple. Krishna consciousness is simple. Yes. Well, we've compli we we complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gurudev. Oh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We, we missed you yesterday. Yes, Gurudev. We uh, I had to go for a soccer game for kids. It was early. Well, I know you. Are, I know you are the supreme mother, so <laughs> I never question never question anything you do for your children because only because of you they are who they are today. <laughs> it is. I, know, uh, I get yeah. that strength from uh, your uh, calls, Gurudev. You did what? No, no. I get I get that uh, strength, spiritual strength. From you, I, I well even before that was how you were when they were really really young. You were like you know, always always doing what was needed to take care of them. And that's what it, that's what it requires to raise children. Because it says to raise a child, it takes a village, but we don't have that environment. So it takes some really strong parents. To, in the, in the early age to really guide children, give them what they need, correct them, and supply all their needs, both emotional and uh, physical. And for your children, they needed it. There was no question about that. It was required. Yes, go to bed. And now they're distributing books. <laughs> Yeah. You created book distributors. <laughs> yeah. So it's a real credit. Yeah. A real credit. Because this is, you know, Prabhupada emphasized the importance of taking care of our children so they get, so they be raised nicely in Krishna consciousness. There are mothers now, I know, I don't want to mention any anything in relationship to identity, but there are mothers who consider their children a bothersome because it interferes with their spiritual life. And that has been brought to my attention a few times. But that's not the idea. Children are not bothersome, that's our responsibility. In the material world, people don't even want to have children. So if someone gets pregnant, they, uh, they go for, you know, killing the child in order not to be bothered with raising a child. That's how, that's how abominable this age is. It's the age of Rakshasas. 
But in Vedi, you see how much Mother Yasoda took care of Krishna. <laughs> she was. Yeah. She, she, she showed Rohini was the same with Balaram. You know. So mother, the mother's care, especially when the children are very, very young, when they're below five years old, it's really essential. Because it's a challenge in the day of the age we live in, because there's so many other things that have appeared in our life due to the modernization of, of our lifestyle and all the things that come with it that can distract our attention away from that. Yeah, it's uh, to make money, to maintain a, a place to live, to take care and make sure you have the amenities you need to live. And it's just because we, we live in a very artificial type environment is that we live in this nuclear families which is the creation of the capitalistic system, which is, you know, every man for themself or every family for themself. Whereas in Vedic culture, because it was more of an agrarian stable, people lived more in communal contact and therefore resources and abilities and talents and time was shared amongst people. And so therefore children got more care from a larger group of people and grew up that way. And they, they, were, they were able to grow up more naturally in that environment. Mm. So yeah, it was, when I was watching you, I was thinking, yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> Because I was you know, always wondering if you'd have any time to come to our programs, but you're always taking care of the kids. And then I realized that this was your, you know, motherly quality, which was outstanding. And we saw the results of that afterwards. So sorry if I praise you too much. <laughs> What are their ages now? They are um, 12, Guru Maharaj. 12. I, when I first met you, how old were they? About five or four? Uh, no, I mean, they were, you have always uh, seen us Gurudev, like in Boston. Mm -hmm. So I can't say, like, even when uh, I was pregnant I have received I mean you were there in the temple you used to be there in the temple you used to come oh even be well that was way back 12 years ago yeah yes yes I met your husband first yes and then he said well I have a wife who wants to follow me so I said okay two's better than one <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he was so so devotional I couldn't believe it I was thinking is this person real <laughs> 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 he had so much enthusiasm for Krishna consciousness and, and he would always exhibit that when every time we, we would meet Thank you, Gurudev. We are not uh, worth, we are not uh, worthy of this praise, but uh, we are very fortunate to have you and we all, my God, family. And now you have extended yourself and and opened up your family to a whole another group of people that you're associating with in your area there. Every time I come to your home, I meet so many nice people who come for programs there. <clears throat> I 
Yeah. <clears throat> Let's hope someday that Krishna will <clears throat> arrange for us to travel again and uh, take up the association where we left off. Yes, Gurudev. Yes, it will be so nice. And I always love the way you chastise me for not eating what you make and for requiring other things that you didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <what do> you <laughs> Well, I always, you know, you know, this is you have you have actually three kids. I'm the the, the big one that's making the most noise. <laughs> okay sorry if I uh, said anything that wasn't supposed to be said <laughs> <clears throat> hey, thank you thank you Hare Krishna uh, Hare Krishna so when you have to go for your sports for the kids, I think, no problem. Yeah, thank you, Guru. <laughs> yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's, it's been uh, one hour, so okay. should we take so more we, questions? Should, should we stop here? <laughs> or if there's anyone else that would like to say anything? Maharaj, actually, I was looking for that song, prayer to Srila Chakramatas Babaji Maharaj, the prayer you said in the beginning. Uh, I, I think I missed who, who wrote that prayer. I was actually trying to find it on KK songs, but I couldn't find it. It's called Sri Jagannath Jagannath Astakam. Okay. I, think, I think it's called Sri Srila Jagannath Astakam. Um, Okay. Give me a minute and I'll see where I, if I can find the author of it. I don't think the author is mentioned here. Let's see. It says, It says here, Rasa Bihari Goswami of Purnia, Burdwan district, was Jagannath Das's initiated disciple. And he initiated one king from Tipura named Chandra Mani, Manikya Badur, Bahadur. Rasa Bihari Goswami's deity was Rasa Bihari Jew, is worshipped to this day in Raja's palace. And then right after that is the listing of the prayer, which is called Sri Srila Jagannath Astakam. And uh, when it, it doesn't give any introduction to the prayer or it doesn't say anything after either. But if you use Sri hyphen Srila hyphen Jagannath Astakam. You should be able to find it somewhere. Sri Srila. Not just Sri, but Sri Srila Jagannath Astakam. Yes, Maharaj, I will try to find it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, Maharaj, what is the name of the book on the life of Rasikananda? I'm reading, it from a, I'm reading it from a compendium, okay. which is called Sri Chaitanya's His Life and Associates by Swami B.B. Tirta, who is a god brother. He was a disciple of one of Srila Prabhupada's god brothers very favorable to our ISKCON society. 
So he's put together this book. But there is, there is a book called Two Beyond Duality, T-W-O, Two Beyond Duality. If you find that book, can somebody post that Two Beyond Duality? Find that somehow. And that has the life of uh, Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in it. It's called Two Beyond Duality. It's divided into two sections. Okay. Anyone find that book, Two Beyond Duality? Check for, like, check Amazon or check some of the book resources and see if you can find it. Uh, so who made lunch today? For us. Okay. No one can find the book? Okay. Um, yes, I okay. Have. You find it yes. to beyond duality. Yes, Maharaj. Babaji oh, Maharaj, you can, yeah, I will share, share it. Yes, yeah, share the link in case anyone is interested. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. It doesn't seem to be any other comments or questions, so we'll stop here. Guru Maharaj, one moment, please. Accept my humble obeisances, please, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Your Holiness. Just a very quick question. May we know who is Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in uh, the spiritual world? <laughs> It doesn't mention in that that uh, narration that I was reading from. You can do some. You have to do some independent research and see what you can find. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So, thank you so much, Maharaj, for your valuable association and thank you so much for enlightening us on this uh, topic today got to know many things so yeah I'll... there's also a nice book um, on the life of Rasika Nanda too yes. that's available that's circulating within ISKCON okay so we'll end here thank you very much and We'll be with all of you again tomorrow for some something related to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thank you so much, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear much. devotees. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna, Hare Bhav.